the Supplemental Instruction Series of Videos for Chemistry 121. And today, we'll be discussing acid-base reactions. Bleach. Bleach, that's right. We can make it in the lab? We certainly can. I like this stuff. All right. I'm Joey Smoking. And we'll be discussing this with you today. Okay. Now, as you can see, to have an acid-base reaction, we need an acid and a base. hypochlorous acid, and we have sodium hydroxide. Giving us water and bleach. Yes, or sodium hypochlorite. Right. Now, the thing to remember about acid-base reactions is that they're simply just double displacement reactions, which you've worked with before. It's just that they happen to involve acids and bases. So in this case, the hypochlorite ion and the hydroxide ion switch partners, and then as a result, you get water and salt. And along those lines, you can rewrite water as HOH, right? Right. So you can kind of see you have the acid bit and the base bit. Yeah, that's right. And together. in fact, it's probably best if you write that, it out like that at first, so that way you can see what shifts around and all that. That makes sense. And if I remember correctly, acid-base reactions always give you water and salt, right? That is right. But not all salt is edible, obviously, because... Yeah, you wouldn't want to eat bleach. Yeah, there's no stains in your stomach. Right. So anyway, okay. let's move on to another reaction. Oh, that looks interesting. So, we have the acid. This is acetic acid, okay. which is found in vinegar. And then you have potassium hydroxide. All right. Now, notice here, I didn't write any products. We're going to try to predict some products based on what we know about acid-base reactions. Okay. Okay. So, if we switch things, and obviously we know we're going to get water. So, HOH or H2O, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay. H2O. Plus, and let's see, so that means that the potassium and the acetate pair up. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get K, what is that, C2H3O2? That's right. And another reason why it's good to write it out as HOH first is that it's easy, it makes balancing the reaction easier should you need to do it. That's true. I can go ahead and go HOH like this up here. That way they can kind of keep track. Yeah. Okay. And so, just a quick balance check. So, like, H in front of here is the acidic H. Yep. And then an H right there. Okay, that's good. Yep. An acetate ion. Remember, it's a polyatomic ion. It counts as one thing. Yeah, one whole big thing. Yes, so one there, one there. We're golden. Yep. Potassium, potassium, hydroxide, hydroxide. Okay, it just Excellent. happens to be balanced. Cool. That's good. Makes life easy. It sure does. Now, you may notice as you work with these reactions, you may be asked to identify what are known as the conjugates. The what? Now, the conjugates are essentially the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. Okay. Now, you know, we first start by identifying our acid and base. Let's use this problem as an example. There's so, our acid. You know, that's an acid. And, and that's a base. base. Now, the definition of a conjugate acid is essentially it's the same as the base, and the reactant side, but it has one more proton, or in other words, one more hydrogen. Okay, so basically it goes from being basic to being acidic. So exactly. Okay. So, let's start, and then on the other hand, a conjugate base is the same as the acid. Except it becomes a base. Yes, and it has one hydrogen removed rather than added. potential for it to go back and forth sort of yeah thing. it's a sort of an equilibrium if you will okay that's pretty cool all right okay so let's start with the acid and see if we can identify the conjugate base okay so the acid we're looking at is HClO mm -hmm. now on this side what seems like the same thing but with a hydrogen missing oh right there obviously all right so this is our conjugate base or CB okay now, of course, it makes this obvious. If this is the base, then what does this have to be? Conjugate acid. Exactly. Okay. And when you, you know, I guess that makes total sense because here you have the opportunity to accept another hydrogen and become an acid again. Mm -hmm. So, 
All right, 50. Now, going down here, all right, so... Acid base. Acid base. All right, which one is the conjugate acid? So, let's see, conjugate acid is going to be that one there? That's correct. Okay. And, of course, the conjugate base is pretty obvious. Because right. Once you find three of the things, the fourth one just comes pretty easily. Right. So, because here, again, we have the opportunity to lose the potassium and regain the hydrogen to go back over there to the acetic acid. Whereas here, let's see, we got the HOH there, since that was a base, um, and we gained an extra hydrogen. So here, basically, we have the opportunity to donate a proton like an acid. That's correct. Cool. So, let's see, you mentioned something about equilibrium before. Yes, equilibrium. Okay, now, I've... I've seen this special book and arrow thing before. Mm -hmm. That looks like this or something like yeah. that. Okay, so that's the equilibrium, right? So yeah. it can go back and forth. Yeah, that's, that's essentially what it's doing. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to follow the line of thinking here. If an acid base reaction like this can go back and forth, mm -hmm. then that means then that it, you, know, you could add like different amounts of acid or base to either side and it still goes back to equilibrium? Yeah, it's kind of like a seesaw effect, if you will. Okay. And in fact, that leads us into another topic, buffers. That's what it's been called before. I've yep. heard that. Yes. Okay. So buffers, the basic definition of a buffer is essentially a solution that can resist a change in pH. And oftentimes you'll need uh, situations where you want to keep the pH relatively the same, otherwise right. it causes havoc. And for, you know, guys, for nurses, since you guys are going into that, that's really important since, especially with, you know, life systems like us, we're people. We yeah. have buffer systems in our own body, so that way we're resistant to pH. Yes, like our blood, for example. Exactly. Anyways, so what makes a good buffer system is to pair a weak acid such as, oh, let's take the acetic acid. Okay, so we pair the weak acid with its conjugate base. So the conjugate base would be of course, C2H3O2, the acetate ion. Mm -hmm. Of course, we can't just have ions floating by themselves, so usually it's the salt form of that conjugate base. So let's say... Sodium. Yeah, yeah, sodium or potassium, whatever works. Okay. So this will resist a change in pH. Right, okay. And I could, can you also rewrite that as just being like... HC2H3O2, and then push equilibrium signs to go to the NaC2H3O2, right? Yes. And the reason it works is essentially when you have acid-base reaction, the acid will form the conjugate base, but if you already have some of the conjugate base, then it kind of, the balancing act kind of pushes it so that the pH doesn't really change. Yeah. So if you add something that's either acidic or basic, you know, the extra amount will take care of the extra acid or base, and so the pH will remain the same. Yeah, so, like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now, remember I said a good buffer system requires a weak acid and its conjugate base. You can't really have strong acids or bases in a buffer pair because that will, because in that case the pH will change too readily. Right, because it's, you know, so if you have a strong acid, it's basically going to lose all the hydrogens all at once. Yeah, whereas with weak acids, it doesn't lose all of them. It just loses a portion of them. Right, like this stuff. Yes, exactly. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Cool. So that's essentially an acid-base reaction in a nutshell, among other things. I'm making bleach. I'll see you later. Um, I better make sure he doesn't blow up the lab or anything. Yeah.